I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I've got some great ideas to share with you today. So let me tell you how this whole thing started. Last week, uh, Laura Buena Donna, I tried to say her name right, her kids call her Miss Laura, um, mentioned on a comment that she had an art show with her kids. And it got me thinking, you know, at the end of the school year, we always do special days to give children memories. We take field trips, we have dress up days, we do all these special things. And, and what's going to happen this year? And so I emailed Laura and I said, you know, <laughs> tell me more. And she did. She had these wonderful ideas that I'm going to share with you that you can use at the end of the year, uh, just to end it in a positive way. And, you know, I've also noticed some of the comments on Facebook that people are saying they're losing their kids and they're trying to pull them back in. These are great ways to do that. So um, I'll just get started. The first idea that Laura shared with me, and she's a pre-K teacher in New Jersey, um, she shared that um, they had an art show and so all the children brought their masterpieces and they talked about how they made them and materials that they use. Children love to talk about themselves just like grown-ups do so that was a great way to get them involved and you know the good thing about the mute button if they go on too long just just mute. Um, another idea that Laura mentioned she plays a game called I Spy. I spy with my little eye something that is blue. And then the children go around their house and they find something that's blue and bring it back. Now, you could do this with colors. You could also do this with beginning sounds. You could do this with three-dimensional shapes. You could do this with blends, almost anything that you're working on. Um, so I spy with my little eye. Uh, another uh, idea that Laura had, show and tell. And, you know, um, when children do show and tell, I've heard negative things about it, but they like it and it helps them with their oral language and you can have them, you know, think of two things you want to tell us. You can set some rules and limits and you can tie show and tell in with any concept or thing. Um, bring something that, that you like to uh, smell or bring something that you, um, that starts with the H sound or bring something that is uh, living. Um, so, you know, you can tie in all sorts of different show and tell concepts. Now, one of Laura's favorite ideas that I love, she did a, a Zoom birthday party for the children who didn't get to celebrate their birthday parties. She did a pajama party and it was a frozen pajama party and they all wore their pajamas and it was at seven o'clock at night and she made these special, you know, frozen, frozen something cupcakes. By the way, all of these ideas are on my blog, drgenafriends.blogspot.com. You can read more about them. But isn't that a, a nice thing to do for kids' birthdays at the end of the year? Oh, and I love this idea from Laura. She plays a game called Musical Chairs. So um, she plays some music, and the kids walk around their chair. And when the music stops, she will hold up something like um, a dot card or maybe a math problem or maybe even something to write down the beginning sound. The children have to bring their whiteboards or a piece of paper and pencil. And when the music stops, she holds it up, they sit down in the chair and they write the answer to the math problem or they try and write the number for the number of dots or the beginning sound or whatever. So you see how you could take these? I mean, I can even think with second graders with review questions about a theme you're working on that you could hold the question and they sit down and they write the answer and then you play more music and they move around. So you've got movement going on, you've got them actively engaged and you've got some learning activities too. Um, another special day Laura did, she did superhero yoga day and the kids dressed up like superheroes and she dressed up like Wonder Woman and she showed the different yoga poses and children had to do these things. And you talk about using your brain when you're doing those yoga poses. What a great idea. And then today, Laura's got something special and she said uh, the parents pick up food once a week. And so when they picked up their food on Monday, she gave them uh, the 
bag with the goodies for they they've got a little bag with mother's day goodies and the invitation to the zoom mother's day tea um it happens to be today at four and i get to be the mystery guest and she says you know come to come dressed in your sunday best and and bring your favorite snack and she's got a little craft activity and the bag for the children to do with their parents and they're gonna you know talk about introduce their mother and talk about what what they love most about their mother so you know, a great Mother's Day activity. And so after Laura gave me all those ideas, I went back and looked at some of the uh, previous things I had on my blog for special days at the end of the school year. And, you know, you can adapt some of these for your Zoom meeting time. Now, one thing, you can have a sports day and they wear their shirt from their favorite sports team or wear the hat and talk about why they like that sport or why that's their favorite team. Now, another thing you can do, you can't do a real field trip, but you can do a virtual field trip and invite them on the field trip. And you could even have them pack a lunch. And um, I looked online, there are lots of virtual field trips that you can take on. And, you know, you could you could talk about the, the aquarium all week long and different animals that they're going to see in the aquarium and then take the virtual field trip. So that's another great thing. You could have a book party where they all bring their favorite book and, and tell everybody why that's their favorite book and then they find their favorite picture in the book and talk about it. You could have a talent show. This is, <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones that I had when I taught kindergarten. We just had a talent show and um, I just have my microphone to remind me of that. And they can do any kind of talent they want. One of the favorite talents that I remember was uh, a little boy hula hoop to the eye of the tiger. And so, you know, it, they can sing, they can tell jokes, they can do anything they want. And I know some of you probably are having pajama days or um, maybe uh, I liked yesterday when I saw on Facebook a teacher said she invited the children to bring a stuffed animal and their favorite and their pet blanket to school that day. So um, different things. Pet day. If they have a pet, they could bring their pet and show their pet. And if they don't have a pet, they could bring a stuffed animal that they would like to share with. Now, Summertime's coming up. You could have a beach party. They could wear flip-flops and sunglasses and their bathing suits. And you could, you know, put on some beach music and, and, and sing some songs. You could have a hat day. And everybody wears their favorite hat. You could have a snack day. Everybody brings their favorite snack and you could read them a story while they eat their favorite snack. You could have Play-Doh day where they bring their Play-Doh, and then they can make things that are different shapes or start with different sounds or anything that you might want. And the good thing about Play-Doh is it keeps those little hands busy. You could have a sock hop, where they all wear a silly sock, and you put on music, and, and they dance, and you can play freeze. And anytime you play freeze with music, do you see how good that is for that self-regulation that they can control themselves? You could have a joke day, and they all get up and tell a joke. So, you know, I've got all of these listed on my blog, but I also wanted to talk about some games that you, you could play online just to, to keep children's attention. And these are simple, easy games. They don't require any equipment, and um, these will be on my blog tomorrow. And then next Friday, I've got more games I'm going to share with you. And so this one, I have a thumb for thumbs up, thumbs down. And this one, you know, I, you can ask any kind of question you want, and they can put their thumb up or their thumb down. You can use this for opinions about books. You can use this for math facts. You can use it for beginnings. I mean, anything you're working on, thumbs up, thumbs down. And as the teacher, I like that because you very quickly can look around and you can say, mm, who's got it and who needs a little more work. Now, you can also play a game called Magic Numbers. And... One of the things that I love to use for math are my fingers, and the kids do use their fingers. So you can, for the younger children, you can say, show me, and they show you how many, or what number comes between two and four, or I had 10 cupcakes and I ate five. How many do I have? All sorts of addition and subtraction. And for the older kids, um, I, I had eight, and um, I have five left. How many did I eat? So, you know, like the missing add-in, they can hold that up too. So all sorts of math with that. Simon Says, 
Simon says, put your hands on the head. Simon says, put your hands on your shoulders. Do you see how these are brain breaks too? Um, and that's why we're losing kids online because they need to move. And um, instead of saying, Simon, use your name. Miss Jones says, or Mr. Peterson says, and uh, give them different directions. Name that tune. Oh, remember playing that? That the children can take turns humming different tunes and their friends try to guess what they are. Now, this one's kind of fun. I've played this at um, different fundraisers before. It's heads or tails. And so the children stand up and um, they put their head, hands on their head or on their tails. And then the teacher flips a coin. And if tails comes up, the kids who have their hands on their tails have to sit down. Okay? And then the teacher says reset. And again, they put their heads, hands on their heads or the tails. You flip a coin, whatever comes up, tails again, you have to sit down. And so, um, and the last one standing, um, I love what, what some teachers told me one time when they play games, they say, and you are the grand prize winner of nothing. And be real dramatic and, and make a lot of fun, have a lot of fun with it. Another game you can play online is pantomime. And the little kids could pantomime nursery rhymes. Your older kids could pantomime, um, you know, feelings or, or other things that you're working on. Scavenger hunt, that is always fun to do. And, and you can play that game kind of like I Spy, where they go around their house. I want you to go on a scavenger hunt and find something that makes a noise and bring it back here or something like that. Um, and, and another fun game is the paper plate game. You put the paper plate on your head, everybody has a paper plate, or they can use a piece of paper, or they can use a tissue or a napkin, anything, and you see who can keep the plate on their head the longest, and you might do the 2D tower banana dance or something like that, and it falls off. And then just one more uh, little fun game. Um, I'm going to Grandma's house, and I'm going to Grandma's house, and I'm taking a banana. And the next child says, I'm going to Grandma's house, and I'm taking a banana, and a uh, carrot, and the next child, and they keep adding to the story. You, do you, don't you remember playing these games when you were little, and you've forgotten, and now you're thinking, oh yeah, I could use these things on Zoom. So I was so excited about sharing, sharing Laura's ideas today. She got me started, and uh, you know what? I bet I just lit a spark, and you've got all sorts of ideas. So please, 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 please put your ideas on my uh, Facebook page under the comments, and I'll try to write those up in, in some sort of form and put them on my blog so you can all share them and enjoy them. And I'm just gonna leave with one thing. I'm gonna leave with an eye hug, and you can teach their kids this because I can't really hold you in my arms and hug you, but I can hug myself and close my eyes real tight and smile real big, and that's sending you an eye hug. So take care, God bless. I hope you got at least five fun things to do to make Zoom time a little bit more fun. Take care, God bless, bye now.